Hello, my name is Tim Bedford. I'm the Associate Principal for Research and Innovation at the University of Strathclyde. I'd like to welcome you to the University of Strathclyde and to the launch of our new research clusters. Strathclyde's got a long and proud history of industrial collaboration, bringing together the best academic research capabilities with colleagues from industry so that we can pull through the benefits of basic research and accelerate their impact on economy and society but also so that we can inspire new research from the challenges we are set by industry. Our existing clusters of advanced manufacturing, enabling tech and energy has shown how successful this approach of collaboration and partnership can be. What's more, the Technology Innovation Centre at Strathclyde, set in Glasgow's first innovation district, the Glasgow City Innovation District, has acted as a magnet for companies and innovation organisations and was highlighted by the UK government R&D roadmap. But we don't stop at Strathclyde, and the next stage of the journey is the launch of our six research clusters, focusing collaboration between universities, research, university researchers, companies, public sector organisations and innovation centres into six domains of industrial informatics, quantum tech, fintech, 5G and advanced comms, space tech and health tech. So today we launch these clusters and invite you to be part of this exciting journey. So it's a pleasure for me to open the event by asking our Principal and Vice-Chancellor, Sir Jim MacDonald, to speak. Over to you, Jim. Good morning to our friends and colleagues at this important event. It's great to have so many of you join us today, and I do look forward to seeing you all before long, in person or on campus. The last 18 months have been hugely challenging for everyone across society, but we've also seen incredible advances in innovation to help meet those challenges head on and create new opportunities that have emerged as a result. Many of you have already transformed the way in which you operate. We've seen rapid adoption of technology at speeds previously thought impossible. And internationally, the vaccine programme has been an outstanding research and innovation effort that has exemplified the benefits of collaboration between the public, private and research communities. But with the impacts of COVID-19 and the challenge of climate emergency, it has never been more important for organisations from across business, industry, academia and government to work together to solve the big challenges facing our society and to help our economy recover. The triple helix approach, as we call it, to strategic collaboration is at the core of our technology and innovation zone, the very beating heart of the Glasgow City Innovation District. As many of you will know, our Technology and Innovation Centre, or TIC as it's known, was opened in 2015 by Her Majesty the Queen and was established in order to transform the way in which academics, business, industry and the public sector work together. And together with the acquisition of the Innova building in 2019, TIC rapidly became the catalyst for the creation of the Glasgow City Innovation District, launched only two years ago as Scotland's first innovation district. This was done in part with the Glasgow City Council, Glasgow Chamber of Commerce, Scottish Enterprise and Entrepreneurial Scotland. The district has created a unique innovation ecosystem for Glasgow that is attracting businesses, startups and investment into the city at a time when it is really needed, effectively magnetising Glasgow as an innovation hub. GCID is now home to more than 1,600 firms spanning a range of sectors and it's been acknowledged as one of the most concentrated collections of innovative organisations in the UK. And those organisations with a presence here include several of the UK catapult network centres including the High Value Manufacturing Catapult, the Offshore Renewable Energy Catapult, the Catapults for Satellite Applications and Connected Places, along with a growing partnership with the Energy Systems Catapult. Several Scottish innovation centres are headquartered or with bases here too, including the Industrial Biotech IC or iBio IC, the Digital Innovation Centre, the Data Lab and Census. We also have CMAC, the Centre for Continuous Manufacturing and Crystallisation, revolutionising pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, and hosts the UK national facility uh, for this activity here in the TIC building. We have Scotland's 5G centre, uh, the Rolls-Royce UTC in Electrical Systems, 
uh, driving forward the electrical revolution for our colleagues there. Uh, the Weir Advanced Research Centre and Scottish Power and SSE working with us in the TIC Low Carbon Energy Programme. Uh, so these and many others. And of course, we're also delighted to host the UK's only Fraunhofer Centre and indeed the Fraunhofer headquarters in UK are based in TIC also. They've all chosen to locate in the district because of the unique ecosystem we've created here. Access to world-class skills and talent, leading edge research, high quality research infrastructure, and a thriving community of forward thinking innovation support organizations. And this approach has been referenced twice by the UK government recently. Firstly, in the UK roadmap published in summer 2020, it was called the Strathclyde Innovation Ecosystem. And then the recently launched UK Innovation Strategy, which cited Strathclyde as home to the Fraunhofer Centre for Applied Photonics, and which included a case study of one of the university's spin-out companies, 3F Bio, which develops sustainable protein as a food source. But our inclusion in the Innovation Strategy document was not solicited by us, but rather by BASE itself. They proactively consulted with us and with academic teams, our industry partners, representatives from the city and the Chamber of Commerce, all of whom gave evidence as to why innovation ecosystems work and what can be achieved when industry and academia work together to solve technological, organization and societal issues through collaborative thinking, co-investment and co-location. And the University of Strathclyde, this approach to innovation is deep in our DNA. Strathclyde was founded 225 years ago this year as a place of useful learning. And that ethos continues to inform everything we do. And we always seek to do this with energy, with drive, and a commitment to entrepreneurial flair that you'd expect of an enlightenment startup. Our mission is to research, to teach, and to be a benefit to society, and ultimately to reach outside the university to make the world better educated, sustainable, prosperous, healthy, fair, and secure. Transformative innovation and impact are key goals under our Vision 2025 strategy, but we cannot achieve this alone. It is by working with business, industry, and government, and other academics from across the UK and worldwide, that we can have the greatest impact in our city, also in Scotland, across the UK, as well as in the global communities that we serve. That's why our research clusters are industry-led and bring together commercial partners to work with academia and the public sector to build upon our excellent research to develop new technologies and innovations to tackle the challenges we face in society. And that's why I'm particularly delighted that today we're launching six new research clusters in areas of priority for Scotland, the UK and international communities, namely 5G, FinTech, Health Tech, Industrial Informatics, Quantum and Space. What Strathclyde brings is primarily centred on our great pool of talent, the people behind our world leading research and expertise and those supporting our students to become highly qualified, industry-ready graduates and graduates ready for the professions. And we combine these highly talented people with purpose and a distinct mission and provide them with the resources and support to make an impact. In doing so, we help to attract new partners, stimulate investment and create new jobs, as well as to provide training and education opportunities. Now, with both TIC and Innovo at 100% capacity, we are moving ahead with the expansion of our technology and innovation zone through a planned £150 million investment in two new highly sustainable buildings, which will more than double the footprints of the zone and contribute to Glasgow's net zero ambitions. The first of these new buildings, TIC East, will be a 20,000 square metre facility, giving Strathclyde a presence on the High Street and Ingram Street, helping to revitalize this historic quarter of our wonderful city in Glasgow. A second building, Tick West, will be located behind the existing Tick building. So, as a socially progressive institution, our clusters are also about investing in people and place, focusing on inclusive growth, aligning with Scottish Government's fair work framework and health and well-being agendas. 
The community benefits in what we do here in Glasgow itself, in Scotland, across the UK, and indeed in the wider world. It's always at the forefront of our thinking. The role of science, engineering, technology, and innovation has never been more important to support the economic recovery from the COVID pandemic, to foster a green recovery, and to level up society. So we want to work with you on this next exciting chapter, Strathclyde's story of our city story, of the story that we're all trying to write together. And that's why we want to tell you more about our research clusters today. So thanks once again for joining us today. And I hope that you find the sessions useful and informative and a basis for future collaboration to our mutual benefit. Thank you. Principal, um, and good morning, everyone. My name is Eleanor Shaw. I'm one of the associate principals at the university, and I too am delighted to be welcoming you to today's event and to spending some time with you. Now, as well as um, helping introduce you to our clusters and the activities that we're up to, my job is, is really quite simple. It's to host each of the panel sessions that we're going to have today. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to those discussions and um, I, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll all learn a lot. Um, as my colleagues have said, we're doing this virtually and it's great, but I do hope it won't be too long until in a very safe way we can be together in a face-to-face -face environment. So please allow me to introduce you to our first panel. Um, I'm delighted um, to, ha to welcome onto the panel uh, Professor Bob Stewart. Um, Bob leads on our 5G and advanced communications cluster. And Bob is joined by our industry partner, Stephen Spears. Um, Stephen is product management leader and um, commercial experience at Cisco. Welcome both of you to the panel. Uh, I'd also like to welcome to the panel uh, my colleague, Professor Jeremy Ward. Um, Jeremy is leading on our fintech, uh, sorry, on our quantum cluster, um, and we're joined today. And this has been deliberately done to confuse me. But our other industry partner is also a Stephen, Stephen Duffy, who is CEO of Alter Technology. Welcome, Stephen, and welcome, Jeremy, to the panel. Good morning. Um, Okay, to, to get us started then, we, we've got about um, 20 minutes. Um, so to get us started, can I please first of all go to Bob and to Jeremy? And, and can I ask you to talk uh, about uh, the benefits of collaborating with partners, um, particularly in terms of driving innovation in both the, the 5G and the quantum sectors? I don't know, Bob, if you want to... Um, respond to that first of all? Uh, yes, Eleanor, I can respond to that. So I, I think at it, it, Strathclyde, maybe as a principal outline there, we have uh, you know, an extensive commitment to working with industry partners and with our current tech building and, and, and other facilities coming along. And the opportunity to be collaborating with industry partners, and I might put them into you know, the tier one category, and I'm delighted uh, Stephen Spears is here from Cisco, or the SMEs, the kind of smaller companies, what we, are, what we are doing at Strathclyde and, and you know, we'll expand on is finding mechanisms and ways to be working alongside those industry partners. Uh, and, and, and as the principal said, we, we, can, we can bring in uh, our, our you know, fantastic resources of students. We have lab facilities. Uh, we have uh, projects that have been running for a number of years and we have cross cluster activity. And it really is a very fertile, fertile ground, uh, you, know, at, you know, in Strathclyde around the, uh, the, the tech campus and the GCID where we can welcome people to work alongside. And, and if we look at the, the, the type of support that's available from UK government and from Scottish government via the Scotland 5G Centre, it really encourages industry and, and academia to work together on current problems. And uh, we're kind of lucky, 5G is a bit of a tag, it's a bit of a catch-all thing. Uh, there's a lot more to 5G than what you might perceive as 5G and you know, getting a new faster phone. It's the next generation. There are so many changes happening in communications and whether it's working with mobile companies or companies like Cisco uh, or working with the SMEs, we want to build that environment here. And then a real key endeavor, Eleanor, is, is, to, is to be bringing those SMEs onto campus to work directly with us on joint and, and supported uh, programs. So the benefit to the university is a very vibrant uh, atmosphere. We have a, a, you know, a great group of researchers, PhDs, KE fellows, 
and uh, it's just going from strength to strength and and again the, the cross cluster opportunity is something that uh, hopefully will come out today as well because 5g links in to fintech to quantum to space uh, it, it, it's a real uh, kind of network of capability that i think we're trying to share with people okay brilliant bob thank you thank you very much and certainly i think most of us would be very excited about being part of that vibrant atmosphere and the sooner we can all come together and be part of that face to face um, and the, the better but thank you so much for that and um, jeremy can i ask you to to share some of your comments about um the, the quantum cluster and, and what you see the benefits of engaging with external partners to be well, the academic programme that underpins the quantum cluster at Strathclyde really focuses on science and really only the earliest uh, stages of development. It's, and the quantum world, it's all, does it work at all? Uh, so we're working at very low TRLs, technology readiness levels, and building apparatus that works reliably in the quantum domain can be quite challenging. Uh, you know, even taking the apparatus outside, out, away, away from the lab, can be quite difficult uh, and so it's getting over this first step of adoption that we, we need we need to uh, work with industry you know to design and manufacture uh, such as very stable narrow bandwidth lasers or frequency combs or uh, atom traps and even vacuum systems you know building vacuum systems that work reliably at a quantum level turn out to be quite difficult so it's really building this apparatus, uh, which is the heart of quantum experimental work, that we need to work with industry. So these, let's call them supply chain components, are really the building blocks to move to higher TRLs, where we look, we're starting to look at the application of some of these very exquisite sensors developed using quantum technologies, or perhaps quantum computing or quantum information processing, which have potentially huge benefits but we've got to get working with our supply chain partners, uh, such as Alter Technology and the other and sort of the cluster of photonics industries that are based around Glasgow. You know, this is this is what we've got to get right to that early stage so that we can build into those higher TRL applications. Jeremy, th thank, thank you very much. And you quite rightly mentioned um, different technology readiness levels and, and clearly across the two clusters that we have here. Um, it would be, I suppose, fair to say that um, our 5G cluster is at a, a higher level of TRL than, than quantum, but both um, see the importance of working with external partners. So with that link, can I please go and um, let's go first of all to Stephen Spears. Stephen, the, the work Hi. that you've been doing with Bob and colleagues um, around 5G, can you talk a little bit about from, from your perspective, what, what benefits you found working with Bob, his team and others across the university? Sure, so let me give you a little bit of background on, on what we've been done over, actually since about 2017, we started working together looking for kind of projects to help connectivity in Scotland. And there was an opportunity to come up with some of the UK government funded programs via uh, DCMS, the Department for Culture, uh, Digital, etc. And uh, we embarked on uh, uh, what was a, a huge project, 5G Rural First, uh, and we built one of the first 5G networks in the UK. In fact, we have built uh, and ran the world's largest rural 5G trial and even finishing when in 2019, I think it was, Bob, uh, that particular project was still never seen one of the scale and ambition of, of rural 5G in the world. Uh, so what were the benefits to us? Well, first of all, Cisco as a company, uh, we are incredibly focused on innovation, but what we do realize, and, and you see this by the way that Cisco acquires different companies, we don't know it all. Uh, we're the first people to admit that. So it's very important for us to get exposed to new ideas, uh, wacky ideas, uh, and 5G Rural first had them in spades. And, and this wasn't kind of a corporate initiative. It was something that I championed and brought into the bigger organization and got Cisco overall to, to, to partly fund this via uh, DCMS. DCMS put in some money, we put in some money, uh, and we had an amazing array of partners. So it let us build a big ecosystem of contacts throughout the industry. Cisco tends to be in the kind of back end of 5G, if you will, in the core network. 
we really don't do much, uh, if you want to say, at the front end with the use cases and what are the applications of 5G. And this particular project brought us right into that forefront of the applications. Anything from connecting a salmon farm. Uh, salmon's a very high-tech industry, very prevalent in Scotland in terms of its economic impact, uh, right through to some work on farms with low-latency networks uh, and looking at autonomous tractors and all the challenges of that. Uh, and in terms of kind of benefits, you think about Cisco as a big company and a wee project here in Scotland. We took this particular project to Mobile World Congress, which is the biggest telecoms trade show in the world uh, in Barcelona about two years ago. And uh, we were with this project with Bob and his team uh, and some of the partners that we had. We had over 30 partners in this particular project. And that was a real challenge for us to, to manage as a, as a group. Uh, we put that right in front and centre of Cisco's presence at Mobile World Congress that particular year, uh, and it was incredibly busy. It was incredibly uh, exciting, actually, to be honest, because we got so much attention for so many things. And that, my one memory of, of that particular show was the interest that we got at Mobile World Congress. A lot of people go into rooms at the back and have discussions, but it was the number of people, senior officials from governments and telecoms who come out specifically to the front to speak to us on the 5G Rural First Stand. So it gave us an immense amount of industry awareness of being an early 5G innovator. So that's the first thing I would say. And the second thing I think is something maybe you don't think about too much, and that is about people development. It gives our people a chance to engage on stretch projects, contribute in theory, it's 10%, but it's more like 50%, and you end up working a lot of your own time on it. But actually, it's incredibly powerful for employee development uh, and giving people different kind of projects, especially to prepare you for entering new areas of business as we've uh, exploited this particular project. So overall, uh, a fantastic experience. Stephen, thank, thank you so, so much. I mean, takeaways for me there, um, the idea of building this ecosystem of partners does seem like a really exciting and very you know progressive way of looking at how we can come together across different organizations to, to make the advances that we'd like to see happening. And I'm and I, I know the impact that um the, the 5G cluster working with partners like yourself has had on, as you say, things like rural first. So, so that's fantastic to hear. Um, but I'm also really pleased you did speak about people development and this notion of stretch projects. Um, I, I, this, this commitment to, to lifelong learning and, and providing all partners and um, everyone involved in clusters the opportunity to continue to develop, I think is probably sometimes an unspoken but very Absolutely. important part of, of being part of that cluster and the collaboration. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you don't you don't learn by sitting in your office, you know, you learn by engaging with the external world. Uh, and uh, Strathclyde brought a huge number of partners to this that we would never have been able to get this number together. I mean, we brought a few, but it was only one or two or three, uh, whereas Strathclyde brought about 20 different organisations together, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. And uh, th that's the kind of environment we like to work in in Cisco, you know, without question. And, and really, does, the, the other thing I will say is the uh, you know, having worked with a number of universities through 5G Rural First, I will uh, highlight Strathclyde has been, and Bob and his team in particular, have been very tuned to the needs of industry. You know, and the question was, well, is this going to work for Cisco? Came up uh, more more than a few times. Whereas yeah. I felt with some of the other universities, it was, okay, we're happy to take your money, but let's just get on with the technology and worry about if we're solving problems later. And we had to have some tough conversations with one or two other universities, I remember, in terms of getting them aligned to let's solve your world problems here, you know? So we, we got excellent support and kind of real industry alignment from, from Bob and his team without question. That's it really just brings out the what's your motto again? The place of useful learning. Of useful uh, learning. That, quite, that that come out that comes out without question. Well, that is brilliant. Brilliant to hear. Thank you so much, Stephen. And um, can I please now um, turn to Stephen Duffy? Stephen, uh, welcome to today's panel. Um, can I ask you to speak about um, your um, experiences of working with the, the quantum cluster and, and the benefits that you've found? Sure, sure. So th thanks, Eleanor. It's great to be part of this event. Really exciting uh, event. I think from our perspective, the, the, the benefits of the cluster and the impact on our innovation from working with the cluster has has, has truly been, been huge. Um, I, mean, I think firstly, um, from our perspective, our business in the UK um, 
was and still is a um, a precision manufacturing service provider for photonics, quantum, and, and, and semiconductor components. Um, but we were challenged by our, our parent company on, on how can we grow? How can we double, treble the size of our, our business in, in, in Europe? And we, we focused on developing a range of, of products for quantum technology applications. And when we looked at our business capability, we, we, we recognized that we had world-class manufacturing here in the UK. We had um, testing and qualification in our, in our sites throughout Europe. Um, our business unit as, as, as Europe's largest um, component supplier or semiconductor component supplier to the European space market, um, we had the roots to market. But what we lacked to really develop these world-leading products was that design and technology expertise. And that was where we worked with the, um, worked with the cluster. So working with the, the Fraunhofer Center for Applied Photonics, working with the, the, the Strathclyde Quantum Optics and Photonics Group, and the, the, the extended network, um, we were able to, to quickly combine the, uh, the, the, the design technology expertise from the cluster with our manufacturing and test expertise and get a, a range of low TRL prototypes very, very quickly. So, so, so the, benefits, um, the benefits were tangible uh, in terms of rapid um, getting to market quickly, reducing the risk, uh, and, and reducing the cost, the cost and getting those prototypes. From those prototypes, we were then able to convince uh, our parent company, um, Tuvnord, our parent company Tuvnord is a, is a multi-billion uh, euro uh, company focusing on testing, inspection and, and certification. And they really saw what we were doing um, in, in Scotland with the Strathclyde cluster, and they get really excited um, what, on what we're doing and with the whole general uh, hype around uh, quantum technologies. And, and they, they wanted to make a, a significant investment in um, quantum and photonics um, technologies by, by creating a, a global uh, design center. Uh, they looked around a number of locations um, throughout, throughout Europe, Madrid, Berlin, um, rest of the UK as well. Um, and their uh, criteria for where they should set up their design center was based on a number of factors that we've, we've spoken about already during this, uh, this discussion. Um, the ecosystem, uh, the access to skills, um, the funding landscape, culture, which is something we've not, we've not discussed yet, but, but that kind of culture that you get um, in, the, uh, in the tech zone is, is really key as well. Um, and as a result of those strengths from the Strathclyde cluster, uh, we were able to secure that um, that six million euro investment in our global design centre within Scotland, and um, we've decided to set that up in the uh, in the tick zone as well. So I think that kind of really illustrates um, a real world example of how that whole ecosystem cluster um, makes a big difference in terms of inward investment, job creation um, for for the UK and Scottish uh, economy. Stephen, thank you so much. That's just absolutely e excellent um, to hear. And I'm sure others will be um, very keen to uh, hear more about the Design Centre. Um, can I ask you quickly just to say a few words about culture? Because that yeah. isn't something that we've so far discussed. And I think that's a really important point to raise. But do you mind expanding upon sure. that a little? Sure. Thank you. Culture aspect for us was was really key. So our, our, our DNA is, is, in, is in manufacturing services. So we, we had that decision, do we, do we set up a design center to be close to manufacturing? Uh, there's some advantages in that in terms of ease of transfer of design um, to manufacturing, or do you set up the kind of culture that kind of encourages a bit of risk taking, um, good, good discussions with, with academia and RTOs. Um, when we went to look at the tech building, the the, the feel, the culture in that environment is 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 much more uh, conducive to to innovation than let's say uh, kind of industrial state focusing on high vol high high volume manufacturing. So, so that culture that you get in the tech zone, with the right people around you, mm -hmm. um, the right kind of risk taking approach um, was was key for us. So I think that's the kind of key points on on culture from our perspective. Thanks, Stephen. And I think you know where where the tech zone is located as well. Do you know it's slap bang in the middle of the city centre. Yeah. 
it, it's in a nice part of town. Lots of great places to have coffee, etc. It's it's a lovely place to to be. It is very very yeah. vibrant. So f thank you for drawing that to our attention. Um, okay, I think we've got about five minutes left on this panel. So I'd like to actually put a question to all of you, please. Um, and I'd just like to ask you about what does the future look like as you continue um, to, to collaborate? How do you see the, the wider benefits of engaging um, across the, the different clusters that we have? And, and, and just what does the future look like in, in terms of your engagement? Any comments that you have on that? I mean, I can't well, first before, so I might go first again, uh, Eleanor, if that's okay. all right. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I heard Stephen say that, you know, the term inward investment, which has always been very important, really, for Scotland and companies, inward investing into different locations in Scotland in the 70s and 80s during the, the uh, kind of microelectronics boom. And, and it's still very important to see, you know, the, the companies from whatever part of the world choosing Scotland. But I think equally important is the is the you know the, the companies we already have in Scotland or maybe more local in, in the UK and and trying to convince them that but not even convince them trying to show them that uh, you know where we are at, at Strathclyde that this is this is a perfect place to grow your business and you know uh, the, the city centre and the GCID and the you know the tick east and west is is absolutely perfect for SMEs to grow for SMEs to partner with the university and and sometimes the education piece is to is to highlight well look here are the companies we currently partner with, the, the, the tier ones like Cisco and some of the SMEs. And here's the facilities we have and here's the opportunities. And, and you're very welcome. You know, you can come in, you can access the labs, you can access the facilities, you can be part of a joint project. And sometimes the local SMEs just need that little bit of a, a leg up. And uh, if, if, it's, uh, if it's something that's at arm's length, then it's difficult to do. But we're actually not at arm's length. The doors are, are very wide open. Uh, for all of the clusters, and uh, you know, we're delighted to find a way uh, to work with the SMEs. So for me, what I see going forward is still, you know, relying on you know phenomenal relationships that we have with Cisco. I mean, with, without Cisco, we we wouldn't be where we are today with the five G momentum and maintaining that, but bringing along that that ecosystem and and companies from abroad absolutely choose uh, choose uh, choose Scotland, but the local environment bringing those folks along. Brilliant, Bob. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Now, I do want to go to Stephen Duffy because I think, Stephen, you were going to come in also. Yes, yeah, so, so just in terms of where, where we see the um, the future collaboration going, um, Jeremy mentioned um, TRL levels. I think it's kind of recognised that quantum is still at uh, an earlier stage. The potential is huge in many aspects of, of quantum from timing, sensing, computing. Um, but, but it still needs to move from the lab into real world applications. And we believe that the, the, the journey that quantum technologies are on will follow very closely the journey that um, semiconductor uh, technology has gone. It's, and even in the last several years, the benefits of semiconductor technologies into our real lives has been enabled by miniaturization, robustness of that technology, driven okay. by Moore's law. Uh, and, and I think, um, from, from our perspective, taking those technologies, those quantum technologies out of the lab, miniaturizing them, making them more robust is the key to, to this really taking off. That's brilliant, Stephen. Thank you very much. Um, I think we've got about a minute left. Can I, so can I please go to, to um, Stephen and to Jeremy to ask if you've got any final comments you'd like to add? Yeah, just, just very, very briefly. Uh, we are continuing to invest with Strathclyde after 5G Rural First. We've run uh, two other projects, 5G New Thinking and uh, 5G Real Next. Uh, we're also setting in place uh, Cisco Mobile Core uh, in the TIC building, which will uh, Strathclyde will be able to use for their R&D and for various connectivity projects across Scotland. So we'll continue to work with them on that. Brilliant, Stephen. Thank you very much. And Jeremy, I feel I need to just come to you finally. So um, I, I agree with Stephen Duffy that it's a collaboration of making practical apparatus that you know, we can we have to give people and uh, you know, take out and try. Uh, that's that's really where the great collaborations uh, yeah, uh, will 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 help us uh, both companies like uh, you know. Uh, Alta, but also I say the wider photonics industry across the central belt of Scotland, you know, much of which is centred around the tick building. 
So really, Brilliant. these are very interesting times. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I, I suspect the themes that we've already started to explore around ecosystem and collaboration and culture and access to talent will continue throughout the day. But thank you all very much. I'd like to now hand you back to my colleague, Professor Tim Bedford. Tim, over to you. Really interesting discussion there. And actually, it was great that uh, we, we talked really there about quantum. Uh, because that's a, a great segue into the next slot. And I'm delighted to introduce uh, Steve, Simon Andrews, who's Executive Director of Fraunhofer UK Research. Um, Fraunhofer contribute not only to photonics, but also to a lot of uh, Scotland's burgeoning quantum sector. So over to you, Simon. Good morning. Uh, my name is Simon Andrews. I am Executive Director of Fraunhofer UK Research Limited. It's my pleasure to speak to you today and discuss how working with Strathclyde has been of great benefit to our organisation and perhaps how it can be a benefit to, to you too. Uh, it's been a marvellous experience for us over the last nine years. Uh, Fraunhofer UK started in to be in partnership with Strathclyde and also to be located in the Technology and Innovation Centre. Uh, here in Glasgow City Innovation District. So since we moved in, when the building was complete in 2015, uh, we've continued to grow uh, and develop what we do. Uh, Fraunhofer Centre for Applied Photonics is the UK's first Fraunhofer Centre. It's, it's neither university nor industry, but a research and technology organisation which delivers uh, applied, uh, very much applied research and development projects uh, to industry and direct contracts, collaborative work. Oftentimes, we'll be in partnership with the Strathclyde, uh, making good use of the expertise from our good colleagues in the Institute of Photonics. But also, we've worked with a wide range of departments across Strathclyde, tapping into that expertise uh, from the chemists, the biologists, uh, the business school, the space scientists. Uh, and one, one good example in particular would be with the colleagues in signal and image processing uh, in the Faculty of Engineering. We had a joint PhD student together. Uh, they had some particular skills of great interest to us. Uh, and that student then went on to, to, to become a member of staff uh, with us, uh, such as uh, uh, the importance of that area to us. And we continue to collaborate uh, with that department, uh, doing joint projects together. And sometimes people will come to us with a specific piece of work, which we pass on to them because they have the, the expertise required. Sometimes it's for us, sometimes it's together. So I think there's a, a lovely, flexible uh, working relationship and how we collaborate and how we work together with industry. Uh, I see Fraunhofer as being uh, an additional part of the of the broad offering of Strathclyde in Glasgow City Innovation District. And our home in the Technology and Innovation Centre is perfect for us. Uh, it's a warm, friendly, collaborative, innovative environment. I think the myth of the lone inventor is long gone uh, with the complexity of modern technologies. We really have to work together with all different disciplines and all different expertises to uh, to deliver what is required in the modern age to solve the, the problems that the so many problems that the world has and to give our industrial colleagues the, the next generation products and processes that they need to be competitive. So Centre for Applied Photonics, Photonics, if you're not familiar, is all about lasers, LEDs, optical systems. So we work across a, a wide range of sectors um, and in the clusters being identified uh, in today's session. Of particular interest to us uh, are quantum technologies and space. Uh, oftentimes uh, they overlap. Uh, we've had uh, three or four successful projects with the European Space Agency, several more with UK Space Agency, again, often in collaboration with Strathclyde. And in te quantum technologies, uh, we are the most collaborative organization in the UK and the, in the Innovate UK funded program. Well, Strathclyde are involved with all four uh, academic hubs in quantum technologies, but again, also engaged directly with industry, and sometimes we engage directly to, together in collaborative projects, um, all for the greater good. We also have strong interests in health technologies. Um, we had a major project with NHS England looking at urinary tract infections, uh, again, working with colleagues in biology in Strathclyde, uh, very successful outcomes there. And also in advanced communications. Uh, our communications work tends to be in very challenging environments, including space, but also uh, underwater and difficult, difficult situations. Um, we also do defence work and uh, security work uh, and work with a wide range of companies, most of which is confidential, so I'll not have the, the time 
and, and I can't go into too many details on some of those aspects. But I think really for me, the, uh, the benefits of working with Strathclyde has been fundamental to what we do because of the nature of our organization, for sure. Uh, the Center for Applied Photonics is led by Professor Martin Dawson who's a University of Strathclyde employee, research director at the Institute of Photonics, and is 50% seconded um, uh, to run the, the Fraunhofer Centre for Applied Photonics and give us the long-term technical vision that we need. But we see our industrial customers and collaborators wanting to locate here uh, in tech uh, to tap into that sort of technical vision, to, to have those discussions over coffee and over lunch with a, with a wide range of experts and a wide range of people to see where things are going. Uh, this is location to a huge number of very ambitious organisations, innovative organisations, uh, industrial and, and uh, not-for-profits too. So uh, I have to say the, the overall experience has been absolutely marvellous. It's, it's a great place to work. The place is a real energy. It's, it's thriving. Uh, as well as the expertise and the range of organisations, of course, there's also the equipment and the fact that being right in the middle of, of where it's all happening is always the best place to be. So lovely to speak to you very briefly this morning. I do hope we can meet in person at some point, and I do hope that you enjoy the rest of your day and consider working uh, more closely with Strathclyde, perhaps Fraunhofer and all those in the Glasgow City Innovation District, and especially here in the Technology and Innovation Centre. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Simon. Um, really great to hear your endorsement of, of what we're doing at Strathclyde. And, and the benefits that you've outlined for us. Um, I have to say, I was particularly pleased to hear you describe our tech zone as a warm, friendly environment. I think you know that that really lies at the heart of, of what we're, we're looking to do. And um, I, I think if we have a warm, friendly environment, then innovation um, and collaboration can only um, flourish. So welcome um, everyone to our next panel session. And I am delighted um, to be joined on this uh, panel by my colleague, uh, Billy Wallace, um, from our Industrial Informatics um, cluster. Welcome, Billy. Nice to see you. And our industry partner, uh, Paul Duddy, who is Chief Executive of Hypervine. Paul, many thanks for joining us today. It's, it's great to have you with us on the panel. Um, I'd also like to introduce you to Professor Max Vassil, who is leading on our space cluster. Hi, Max, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Brilliant. Wow. And our industry partner, Tom Walkinshaw, who is Chief, Chief Exec of Alba Orbital. Hi, Tom, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Great, brilliant to have you both. Um, so, first of all, I should say, uh, Tom, Many congratulations on winning the recently your Y Combinator um, funding. Um, uh, we know that you've been collaborating with Strathclyde since um, before we started the process of building clusters. Um, so given um, your experiences so far, I, I wonder if you could talk with us a little bit about what would help you to engage with the university today. Uh, it's a good question. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, yeah, it's certainly, uh, we had the first company it's called Antigate Y Com. Take a different level now. Um, I think in terms of the biggest challenge I think we faced was just sightseeing. There's a lot of obviously resources in the university, talented people, really interesting things. And I think it's always a challenge as a small company who you want to talk to who isn't able to talk to you the key thing so uh, hopefully an event like for people to kind of sort of showcase the different stuff that Strathclyde can do to help um and engage on big projects sometimes you just need a hand just trying to find someone to fill a, a role you know um but it's all important okay um tom thanks thanks very much um paul can I come to you now, um, please? And, and can I ask you, I, I'm aware that you've been working with the university um, while we've been putting together our, our cluster approach. So you've been working with us for, for quite some time. Um, can I ask you what your journey with us has, has been like um, and how you would like to continue to work with the university going forward? If you could speak a little bit about that, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we, we started um, about two or three years ago. And actually, since that point, we've, universities have been something that we've always been sort of close to. 
Um, so we're actually based in Glasgow, and we've actually we started working with um, Strathclyde University in 20, uh, 2020. Um, so before that, we were actually working. We won an interface grant with um, with Oliver, was our manager at that point, and we went with Napier University to learn a bit more about blockchain at that point. Um, but then following on from there, we actually with um, pointed out an internship with Strathclyde University, and that meant we, we could work with uh, the business school over summer. Um, and that helped us a lot with our work at Hypervine and also at Climate Trace. Um, and then from there, we've actually, so we've progressed that. It was a fantastic experience. We've progressed that and then we've actually went into, um, now we're doing our, our data lab project with um, Strathclyde University. And then following on from there, we're actually going to be doing a, a KTP with them. And we're looking at some other opportunities to work with Strathclyde University as well through, through the data lab. And this all sort of ties back into our, our business because we're a new company and we've, we've just started out, basically a couple, basically started trading a couple of years ago. Uh, and what Hypervine actually does is that we use satellite data and mobile data to help the construction and mining industry save money and lower their carbon emissions. Um, and on our journey, which, which universities have taken quite a, a large part on, is um, we've won framework bids uh, or helped construction companies win framework bids, kind of six-year bids. Um, we've collaborated with the European Space Agency, and we've also co-founded Climate Trace, which is 10 organizations uh, working together to monitor greenhouse gas emissions from every major industry in the world. Um, and that was backed by former US Vice President Al Gore last year. And the next big step for us, which we're hoping as well to be partnering and uh, having the university playing, playing some role in, is COP26, uh, because Hypervine's based in Glasgow. Climate Trace is going to be a big deal presented um, at COP26, so we're hoping to kind of make the make the best of that opportunity. And since Strathclyde's in Glasgow and Hypervine's in Glasgow, we, we, we're seeing this sort of journey journey together, basically. Okay, and um, so uh, Paul, from from you talking uh, with us about your journey so far, clearly you've uh, collaborated across the university sector, and you've done lots of different things at Strathclyde. And I know, for example, that Kirsty. Um, has been a colleague who's helped you navigate, um, I suppose, who to speak with and what funding might be available. So I suppose a question I'd like to put to you and, and then also please to ask um, uh, Tom if he'd like to comment as well. How easy has it been to work with the university? Because I know sometimes, you know, universities historically may not always be regarded as the easiest of institutions to work with. How have you found it working with us at Strathclyde? Um, I've actually found it uh, a brilliant experience. Uh, Kirsty's been amazing. She's helped us a lot um, with it, uh, with sort of kind of identifying uh, departments and seeing what type of people we could work with. Interface Online was actually really good uh, for us because they, they would help kind of contact universities for us, which was really good, and put us in touch. So that was a good sort of um, thing in between, basically, that helped us identify opportunities at universities. Um, but we think that the the universities are absolutely great to work with, and we think companies should work with them uh, if they can. Um, but they are super big organizations, so it is it can be kind of tricky to find what person's the right person you should speak to. Luckily enough, we, we knew Kirsty, um, the last company I worked for as well, um, did some academic research. And some of our team as well is from an academic background. So there is kind of that knowledge of working with universities and this collaboration between academia and industry is, is already sort of in the sort of blood of Hypervine. But not, not all companies would know that, I don't think. Um, so it would be good to kind of get some more exposure um, for, for companies to kind of understand how they could access it. Data Lab's a really good one um, for that because they, they can also kind of put you in touch with them. Um, but actually working with Strathclyde University, we found to be like very, very engaging, um, very practical, uh, and it's a sort of world famous engineering school. So that's some of the things that we, we really like about um, Stra working with Strathclyde University is the not just the knowledge and skills, but the sort of attitude towards um, collaboration. And yeah. kind of with with Hypervine, we are super collaborative, and we, we work with uh, ten other companies in Climate Trace, and so we're we're very much a collaborative uh, company. So working with universities is quite a natural step for us. Brilliant, Paul. Thank you very much. And, and, and Tom, can I come to you um, to ask you about that? How have you found it uh, so far working um, with, with the university? Yeah, so I think about uh, Billy. Uh, uh, 
a networking event. Uh, uh, we went to Ricky of an event, which is um, sort of up thing for tech startups. Um, so that's where I met uh, Billy. Um, so yeah, uh, so we, we worked on some stuff through that and train station project. Uh, this train station at Strathclyde for satellites, and um, you sort of did with them on uh it hadn't been used that often since it came in there's a fire in the building and, and we helped kind of recommission it and then get it operational again and we were working with a bunch of different folks in there um i worked with uh, malcolm mcdonald on a few things uh, who's the sort of uh one of the leading space people at strathclyde um and, and billy mostly there have been our sort of two main points of contact historically and uh, there used to be an organization called Soxa, um, who were sort of, uh, sort of, I guess, some sort of, they, they were really close to, I think they were sort of an arm's length kind of catapult center. So we worked with them when they were uh, in business for a few years. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think in general, it's um, uh, like, obviously, like universities are large. Um, um <laughs> so it's it's uh you know, it's the navigation is the challenge um so i think yeah. nothing strathclyde can do to uh i think even in strathclyde people don't know what other people are doing you know uh um, so like, like certainly more that can be done to try and signpost companies especially like, stage companies i mean a lot on founders plates you know and, and they're not going to like spend a lot of time trying to figure out the nuances of a, a super large organization um biggest barrier i think to collaboration is really just like finding the right person at the right time and um and trying to work together on that that would be um you know and hopefully an event like today is something that will um will help kind of showcase um all the different stuff okay tom thank you so much that's that's very helpful to hear okay can i turn now please to to max and to billy um so we do have some so oh, some great SME representation with us on the panel today. So I'd like to ask you, um, what are each of your clusters doing to help SMEs in particular um, get easier, better access to our, our people, our skills, our facilities, um, and uh, that sort of collaborative ethos that um, that we, we, we nurture at Strathclyde? I don't know, Billy, if you want to go first. Yeah, I think the, the, the talking about SMEs is super important. It's just the whole COVID thing. The post-COVID recovery is going to be driven by SMEs. Everybody acknowledges that's where the job creation is. Um, we're a big organisation, so our role in that is to is to help the SMEs. Um, I think we're probably still the biggest city centre employer in Glasgow. Um, what that what that means is that it can be really difficult to find anyone in the university. I think, was it Tom just said, it's like, uh, I'm not sure Strathclyde even knows who's there. In my own department, I, I don't know who's available, or I, I know who's available, I know everyone in the department, but I don't necessarily know what their interests are right this second. So when you've got an organization that's got like 3,500 super smart people with PhDs, all working on very complex and, and sort of subtle research, how do you identify um, particularly as an SME, how do you identify the right person? How do you know that you should be going to one department rather than another? And I, I think the thing that the clusters is doing is actually, and, and people said it earlier, th there's a cultural change here. We, we've traditionally been very siloed. We do have these faculties, we've got our departments, and the clusters are working across that. So Tom mentioned that we met in the pub. Literally, Tom had been working with uh, the guys in mechanical and aerospace engineering for two, three years. Um, I didn't know that. I bumped into to Tom in, uh, the, at the Rookie Oven meetup. Um, as you can, when we were talking maybe five years ago, four or five years ago, Tom looked even younger than he does today. <laughs> so the, the, the fact that I'm in a pub and you've got a guy who's launching his own spaceships um, made me kind of jealous. He was so young and had achieved so much already. But um, we, we met there rather than meeting through, you know, me. I mean, I'd spoken to Malcolm, spoken to, to Max before. So how, how would I be? 
understand that? And if I can't understand it, how does anyone outside do it? How do you, does a, a small company with a handful of employees find the right people? So one of the things that we're doing very obviously, you know, the, the word cluster is a clue there. We're bringing it together and making it into a bigger target. We're, we're taking these areas of expertise and saying, hey, if you're interested in 5G, if you're interested in quantum, if you're interested in space, here's where to go. So that, that kind of signposting makes it much more obvious. I mean, having people like Kirsty that was mentioned earlier, uh, working in the IEE organization, um, that makes it much easier where you can go to one place and you can say, hey, this is what I need. Now, um, bringing people to get together across faculties has meant that we've had to kind of map out the expertise we've got in the university, but that's, it's actually difficult and a bit, it's, it's hard to do and keep up to date. So I, I keep thinking that I'm someone who's worked in recommender systems for like a couple of decades. And so I'm always thinking, what we really need is a recommender system. I need someone to give me a bunch of funding to build a recommender system for this. So I can actually identify the right people and recommend them to the right people. So make those contacts the way that you would do if you were at an event and you were bumping into people, learn a bit about them and think, oh, right, you should really be talking to Max because the stuff he's doing is super interesting for you. So um, I, I think coming out of COVID, th those kinds of events are going to be super important again. It's, this has been one of my bugbears for the last you know year and a half is that I can't go to roadshows and workshops and so on. The, the kinds of things we would like to set up and we'll do that going forward. So I hope that answers your question, Ella. Billy, it does. Thank you very much. And I, I, I know that everyone at some point on this call is going to want to know where and how they can get involved in rookie oven meetups. If, if I'm saying that correct, correctly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, Michael Hayes, who set up, so actually, I think he was in MAE again. Uh -huh. He did a a KTP back in the day. Michael founded uh, his own company and it was a absolute disaster. He did all these classic build a big company really quickly and got all the funding and it just crashed and burned. And he said, never again, here's how you should do it. And he set up that organization. Was, the same as the university, there's, our ecosystem is great, but there's other organizations like that around in the ecosystem yeah. that are useful to know about. So we've not started up the, the events again and back in the pub and it, it's a it's not just Tom I've met there. If, if anyone saw my entry into Images of Research and you see the little statue, that's through bumping into a sculptor in, in that pub and talking about cool. them there. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, Michael would be the person to reach out to there. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, Max, can I come to you now, please, um, to, to talk about, I suppose, from the, the space cluster perspective, how do you see things um, developing? Well, um, so... One thing is is this change in uh, in culture that also Billy mentioned. So uh, we we are trying to uh, go from a situation in which uh, the relationship was a one to one relationship between a company and an academic uh, to a situation in which the company can have access to what we do more broadly as a university, and this um, requires on our side to do some mapping exercise. So we have to identify people, understand um, where they are going with their research, and also understand better the landscape. So what the uh, companies generally want and how we can match up the internal developments with the, the demand of the companies. And is is a very difficult, difficult process because research is not necessarily uh, evolving in a, in a straight line, right? So there are things that are happening uh, all the time. So what we are trying to do is to capture this evolution uh, so that companies can understand better what we do and have uh, less generic messages. Um, and given the volume of things that we do and the diversity of things that we do, um, we are trying to find a way to communicate better to companies so that they know more specifically uh, what we do in the area they are interested in. Um, in, in this way, we hope to be able to uh, do what we have not been able to do so far, which is uh, to um, have multiple people inside the university who can contribute to uh, solving problems that SMEs have. And it's not necessarily true that one academic has all the solutions. Uh, there are multiple options that might uh, need to be explored and it's 
a way to do it is to have more uh, workshops in which we can show our advances. Uh, the other way is to have more tailored messages in which we explain more specifically what each one of us does. And we have to do it in a way that um, is more continuous, more um, uh, keeping up to uh, with, with what we do in university. Uh, in the past, it was a little bit too uh, sporadic and, and diluted, and we need to have it better organized and better coordinated. Okay, thanks, Max. So really being, you know, speaking the same language as those SMEs that we want to engage with, um, make, doing whatever we can in terms of our communications with our smaller and medium-sized companies to make it easy for them to, to work with us seems like a very sensible um, attitude to have. Uh, colleagues, I think that is us for this particular panel session. So thank you all very much for your time today. Um, again, ecosystems really coming out of this very, very strongly and, and collaboration across all parts of the ecosystem. So thank you so much for your time today. And I'm going to hand you back over to Tim. Tim, over to you. Thanks very much. Uh, another great discussion, really interesting. And you know, SMEs are so important for the, uh, the, the industrial growth, for the, the growth of the economy around Glasgow and so on. So great to hear those stories of how uh, we're working together with, with all of those smaller groups. You know, but the tick zone uh, and the tick itself is, is obviously really making a big difference. It spreads wider than that. It goes through, we've got a Glasgow City Innovation District. And to, to give an overview of the activities across the tick zone and the innovation district, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Dr. Olga Kozlova. Good afternoon. I'm absolutely delighted to be here to talk to you about the first innovation district in Scotland, the Glasgow City Innovation District. The mission of the innovation district is that it's a vibrant uh, areas within the primarily city centres uh, where there is an environment for um, entrepreneurial company, technology company, uh, to come together to create that critical mass that could deliver economic and social impact. When we talk about innovation districts, we quite often think about Barcelona or Toronto, but now Glasgow has emerged as a real innovation capital with three innovation districts in it. And the first is Glasgow City Innovation District, GCA. GCID is a partnership between the University of Strathclyde, um, uh, Glasgow City Council, Entrepreneurial Scotland and Glasgow Chamber of Commerce. It is anchored around the University of Strathclyde with very easy transport links, very close to Queen Street Station and with easy access to the airport. And it's also close to the Merchant City with all its vibrancy of retail and hospitality. So the district is really a area where you can work, live, and play. As I said, it is anchored by the university and the principal has already mentioned our plans for technology and innovation center uh, zone expansion. So um, the what uh, tech is offering us is already a vibrant ecosystem of companies, researchers and uh, innovation support organizations such as um, catapults and innovation centers. But the challenge we face, and it's a good challenge, is that we currently are at capacity, but there is continued interest in co-locating within the GCID. So what we're planning to do is to expand the take zone and to double the available space by building two buildings, additional 30,000 square meters, which will be the bigger Tick East building and a smaller Tick West building. And what we're looking to create is additional facilities for collocation of industry and academia as it will be state of the art laboratory facilities, long term commercial unit for rent, plenty of uh, collaborative space where companies and researchers could come together on next projects, additional conferencing facilities, and also state of the art entrepreneurship hub, which will become a heart of our entrepreneurship strategies, Trust Light Inspire where the companies will be able to locate in different zones uh, depending on what uh, stage of entrepreneurial journey they are currently in 
and be able to progress as they grow and develop. Also, there will be a social innovation center which enable the community to come into the innovation district and enjoy the benefits of it. Um, underpinning the growth of the tech zone is really the clusters that, again, the principal has mentioned previously. And the way we're defining clusters is really areas where there is a critical ma mass of multidisciplinary research expertise from across the faculties. This is all se uh, sectors where we envisage there will be a significant growth, where we have strong links with companies, both SMEs and tier one partners and connections to the research technology organizations such as catapults and innovation center i think the message i want to give you at the end is that glasgow city innovation district is not an idea it is existing vibrant community it is here and now and the reason we hosted a round table for base where tenants of gcid have spoken about what the innovation district means to them and how it benefited their uh, businesses we have exciting plans for the innovation district going forward and i look forward to working with you all and making it a reality thank you very much so much. Um, I'm really loving hearing this morning uh, Glasgow uh, City Innovation District being compared with innovation districts in Barcelona and Toronto. That makes me feel quite excited um, that, that we're up there with the very best cities um, uh, pr providing that, that really vibrant ecosystem. So welcome to our third and final panel. Um, this panel we are going to be um, looking at both our fintech and our health tech clusters and I'm really delighted to join with me on this panel uh, my, my colleague uh, Professor Matthew Reedy who is leading on our fintech cluster. Hi Matthew, how are you this morning? All good, all good. Hi Anna. Great to see you um, and our industry partner Nicola Anderson who is Chief Executive of Fintech Scotland. Hi Nicola, how are you doing? Hi Eleanor, really well, thanks. Thanks for your time today, Gra really great to have you here. And uh, from our health tech cluster, can I please introduce my colleague, Professor, Professor Patricia Conley. Hi, Trish, how are you? Great, thanks. Good to be here. Thanks very much for being with us today. And our industry partner, Peter Ellingworth, who is Chief Executive of the Association of British Health Industries. Hi, Peter, how are you doing? Fantastic. Great to be with you guys this morning. Brilliant. Thank you all for your time, um, and it's really just brilliant to have you here with us. Um, can I go, uh, first of all, please, to Nicola and to Peter. Um, you, know, you, you, you work in exciting um, industries, industries that are you know, moving at pace, um, but also industries which can be, are, are quite heavily regulated, I suppose it would be fair to say, given, given the, the sectors that you're operating in. So within those heavily regulated sectors, um, can I ask what ben or be can I ask what benefits you see working with your respective clusters? Um, FinTech first of all, Nicola, and then I'll come to Peter to ask about health tech. Well, a great question. Thanks, Eleanor. Um, I, I think we're really excited actually to be involved with Strathclyde developing fintech cluster there it it's a really important part of scotland's fintech cluster more broadly uh, and i think actually there are probably three points that i would make um, about that kind of opportunity that the cluster presents uh, and that centers around innovation for absolute sure it also helps us really think about the impact that we can have and then we also really think about the opportunity for inclusion so it's innovation impact and inclusion um and i think that really sums up the opportunity that a cluster presents more broadly and so from that innovation perspective it's about ideas it's about business connectivity and it's about implementation of those ideas because we're bringing the expertise of the industry and the connection with the industry into that cluster um, and, from, and that really helps then as we think about the impact that it presents and the opportunity that it presents. I think really um, helping each other through knowledge share, learning through best practice and, and really um, understanding breadth of perspective, I think um, can't be underestimated either. 
how we transfer knowledge from one sector to another um, is also really, really important and really valuable, actually, we've found in working with the team at Strathclyde in the FinTech cluster. And that opportunity for innovation shouldn't be underestimated. It allows us then to really face into some of those big issues. You have mentioned regulation um, and that actually, as we think about the inclusion point there, how we learn from the other disciplines so that we can think about that expertise and, and move forward, how we learn across the different um, uh, sectors and, and then how we think about some of those issues that we want to make sure from a societal point of view that we're really addressing. And that's what makes the cluster and the, and the approach from the cluster really exciting. Thank you, Nicola. Um, and I'm so pleased that you've mentioned inclusion as being a, a, you know, one of the three eyes, if if you like. Can, can I ask you, just to, before we go to Peter, just to expand upon that a little bit for us, please? Yes, absolutely. So we really see the benefit actually in the in the in the opportunity across Strathclyde to bring expertise from humanities, from financial services, um, from the from legal uh, from the law uh, society, from the from the different disciplines right across the university, um, and from the business school. And, and that really helps bring breadth of perspective and diversity into the conversation. And that's vital as we think about the opportunities that FinTech presents us for the future. Uh, because really what we're doing here is setting out our stall and thinking about the future of financial services and how FinTech yeah. has a role to play in that. Um, and so to have an inclusive conversation at this stage is vital. So we know we're bringing society with us and we're bringing yeah. breadth perspective with us in that journey that's brilliant nicola thank you so much for reminding of us that as of that so 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 important and um, peter can i come to you now please and i i do have to say i do love that image the the, the the picture that you have above your head stay safe keep your distance so i think we're all keeping safe and keeping our distance today um but peter can i ask how, how have you found um again another you're operating in another regulated industry um how, how has working with the fintech cluster with Trish and her colleagues helped um, you and, and, and your organisation on the journey that you're on? Okay, thank you. Well, I, I guess the first thing to say is um, I'm extremely excited, um, very much like has been said already, about the opportunity that Strathclyde is creating. You know, I've done quite a bit of work in the last 10 years looking at global life science cities and what makes them successful. You know, in our space in health technology, of course, you'd look to the Bay Area in California, San Diego and Orange County in California, look at uh, Boston on the northeast coast. But I, th I think when you look at those, they are, they are huge ecosystems. What makes it stand out is the fact that all of the components that are needed by early stage businesses are brought together. Now, the, there is no such thing as a historical accident. It needs a lead. And if you study those, and indeed Singapore as well, you'll see that there's a catalyzer in there. And Strathclyde is taking that leadership role. I think it's going to be absolutely vital. I mean, for early stage business in health technology, you do very much need to bring together the financial sector because they need investment. Now, whether that is from a government end in early stage grants, SBRI programs, or whether it's you get to the early stage funding um, from angel investors all the way through up the various stages of financing. The other aspect that is absolutely vital in here, and you know, I think it's been said, is bringing together those other resources. So as an early stage business, you are very small by definition. There may be one or two founders in there, um, the innovator, a support person, and you're going to need to be able to access every resource that's there. Regulation, legal, of course, financial, we've talked about that. But the sweet spot in here, I think, is when the city comes together in Glasgow and you've got a clear focal point because the city for health tech means the wider social and healthcare architecture and it's access to the NHS that is the real gem here for Scotland, for Glasgow and for an early stage company. The NHS is renowned worldwide for the quality of its care and bringing it into this collaboration is really going to make a big difference. Spin that back to the finance sector. They need to know that those early stage companies are going to be able to do their evidence. 
their proof of concept, of course, at the start, but evidence in use is critical. And the NHS as a collaborator gives them a global kite mark, essentially. That's brilliant, Peter. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I really like um, your discussion there about we can't just make the creation of this a historical accident. There's actually got to be institutions behind it, driving it. And I suppose having the shared ambition of, of what is possible. And we know what's possible because we, we can see it happening in, in other areas. So why not in, in Glasgow and, and in Scotland? Um, can I please now turn to Trish and to, to Matthew? And, and can I ask you about working with partners like Nicola and, and Peter and um, the ways in which you see that external engagement helping drive innovation, collaboration, and also, I suppose, anything that you might want to comment about across clusters, because it's great that we have our clusters, but um, we don't want those clusters to be siloed either. So I don't know, Trish, if I can come to you first of all. Um, yes, Eleanor, um, I think you were talking, you know, about uh, regulatory and, and innovation in the ecosystem and how Strathclyde is, is leading on this for, for health tech in the Glasgow City Innovation District. The health tech sector is very complex and very regulated. And even from first experiments in laboratories, there are challenging questions about access to volunteers, to clinical samples, ethics, etc., all the way through a product development journey through translational research, which Strathclyde reaches for with, with excellence in, in, in many cases, and to product delivery and final regulatory sign off before we go on to market launch and, and vigilance. There's also the issue of data and access to clinical and personal data is highly regulated. And so we need um, to create the ecosystem that supports that. And we've been working in the health tech cluster. I work with my colleague, Professor Roman Maguire, to create essentially a triple helix of academia, industry and the NHS. We've delivered two framework agreements with NHS Lanarkshire and the Golden Jubilee Hospital. We have extensive collaborations across uh, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, some in the news this week for our successes in wound infection detection. So we understand that in this complex environment for the innovation that we want, we bring together multidisciplinary teams and our, our industry partners and our NHS partners are, are critical to this. And of course, our association with uh, ABHI, the Association of British Health Tech Industries, lets us reach to a very wide audience of companies, global SMEs, micros, startups, and we're very excited about how that journey develops. Th thanks very much, Trish, and, and, and thanks for reminding us, of course, that the, the clusters, yes, are situated um, in and around the City Innovation District, but there is that global reach as, as well that, that we are, by being part of that ecosystem, that we are able to connect in with um, other organisations globally. Very important. Thank you. Matthew, can I come to you now, please, um, and ask you to talk a little bit about some of these issues from the, the point of view of the... Yeah, sure. So I suppose one of the the benefits or drawbacks of going last wait, wait, wait. Is, is that I'd just like to reiterate a lot of what our colleagues have said, particularly Bob Stewart, about the, the link between research, uh, innovation and impact, and also the, the student experience that we try to deliver here. Um, and again, reiterating what uh, Nicola said there around about innovation impact and uh, inclusion, I think one of the things that we're really keen to make sure that we do here at Strathclyde is recognise that fintech um, as an emerging topic is truly uh, multidisciplinary and we are trying hard to make sure that we get all the parts of the university aligned to deliver against this so if that's uh, using machine learning and AI and science, uh, cyber security and engineering, uh, policy, law, entrepreneurship, business and management, bringing all of them together along with our finance um, colleagues to ensure that the, the technology disruption that's inevitable becomes embedded within company practices so that companies see the true value of the technology innovation and the active research at the university. Um, I think if we if we narrow it down and look more at areas that are highly regulated, I think there's, there's a real opportunity for academia, Strathclyde and others to play a really key role in, in acting as a broker 
between regulators and an industry to act as a, an independent, rigorous advisor to help deliver new innovation, deliver new knowledge. But ultimately, this becomes quite bilateral. And so the impact of that innovation can sometimes be quite um, narrowly felt. And I, so I think there's more, or where, where academia can maybe offer its biggest benefit is to bring together um, at the pre-competitive stage, multiple parties that can create innovation networks <laughs> that can bridge that gap between fundamental research and the practical challenges, help to drive cooperation and collaboration that's really desperately needed, and therefore helping to create an ecosystem that supports regulators and others and um, make sure that they're not stifling innovation, but rather to ensure that UK regulation is really fit for purpose. And, and this is quite, quite an ambitious challenge, don't get me wrong, but it's one that Strathclyde in, in collaboration with Nicola and Fintech Scotland is actively working on. So as an example, we currently have the, the RegTech Forum here at Strathclyde. It's an international knowledge-based network which brings together private sector, public sector, academ academics, uh, regulators, all working in a series of regulatory challenges. And so the next stage for us will be how we formalise that network so the benefits are realised a bit more widely and a bit more systematically. So I think these are some of the areas and the different ways that academia and, and external parties can really maximise uh, value from each other. Okay. M Matthew, thanks very much. Really um, helpful to um, guide us through your, your learning so far. Um, We've got a couple of minutes left for this panel, so I'd like to just put to, to all of you, but, but please ask Nicola and Peter to come back to us first on this. How do you see things developing um, with your engagement at Strathclyde, at, at Strathclyde with, with the, the different clusters, with health tech, fintech and others that we've, we've um, discussed today? I, I wonder, Peter, if I could come to you first of all um, to offer us a few words, please. Sure, good place to. Um, you know, we, we've talked about all the elements of collaboration in a cluster here, um, almost as though it's within a bubble in a particular location. Where I think the huge opportunities in the mid to longer term, and maybe even realise them sooner, is to start linking clusters around the world. We do a lot of work as ABHI with the Dell Medical School, the University of Texas in Austin, and with them, with the Austin Healthcare Council, and ultimately with the wider community there. And I think what's great about Glasgow here is that you can get your arms around it. It's a population that's at a meaningful size. The partners, while diverse, are not too far apart. You can actually navigate this. You know, the Innovation District is going to be like Kendall Square. Let's think of it in those exciting terms. We're creating the new Kendall Square in Glasgow, and this university is going to be at the centre of that. That's superbly powerful. And in the midterm then, so if we start linking that with other clusters internationally, there's huge learning there. There is the potential for companies to co-develop across the space. Really exciting. On regulatory, of course, regulatory science, environmental and sustainability science are going to be vital for any early stage business now developing. So I think put that with a wrapper of health around it, the wrapper of the NHS, and then the wrapper around that again, of Strathclyde. I think we're onto a winning formula here, unquestionably. Brilliant, Peter. Thank you so much. And I, I'm, I'm sure that Nicola will have some comments also about other clusters that exist and, and how we can engage with them. Thank, thanks, Eleanor. I, I wholeheartedly agree with Peter, actually. I And um, I think the opportunity and the it is just incredible here. I'm really excited. And industry equally is really excited about this. We talk to the financial services sector who have great presence in Glasgow, and they're really excited about the cross-sectoral opportunity and that really that, that brilliant position to learn and to build those innovation ideas across the sectors whether that's with space tech, as we think about the climate agenda and the intersection between space and fintech, whether that's with the health tech cluster and we think about how health tech and fintech can merge as we address the vulnerability issues that we kind of see unfolding, or the role of quantum actually, as we address and lead into some of those big issues that are facing us like financial crime and how we address fraud. So there's some 
fantastic opportunities here to really address some big societal and economic issues that just present a really exciting opportunity. Um, and we can't wait, actually. We're really excited. Um, the fintechs are excited. The industry is excited. And that opportunity to learn and really think about where technology and data can take us to answer some of these big issues just presents us with a unique opportunity that's here at our feet. Nicola, thank you so much. Um, we're just out of time now, but what a great um, set of observations from yourself and Peter to, to finish with there. Again, Peter, um, the Kendall Square example is a brilliant one, and you're right, we have got the potential um, to, to replicate that and, 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 and also build on it and, and you know, make it our own, which is really important. And Nicola, to your points as well, big societal problems as well as local challenges, what we can do, but through collaboration to address those across each of the areas our clusters are working on at Strathclyde is exciting. It's a great thing to look forward to. So can I thank you all very much for your time this morning? Um, I know you're all very busy people, so it's been great to have you with us. Thank you so much. And um, I'm going to hand over to Tim again. Tim, over to you. Well, thanks very much, Eleanor. Another excellent uh, roundtable there. Really interesting uh, discussion. And I think that's brought together so many things that we, we have at Strathclyde and in the Glasgow City Innovation District, the collaboration, but also the ambition, the boldness and so on that, that sits behind it. We've touched upon the, uh, the, the collaboration with different clusters of, of organizations, different types of organizations. We've touched upon the, the, the locational aspects, the fact that we've got this vibrant community here in GCID. Um, but I think also we've, we've touched on various aspects which are really significant for the, the opportunities, the, the reg tech, for example, the, the grouping together of small technology companies with larger companies in order to accelerate technology. All fantastic stuff. Now, we've come to an end uh, for the, the main part of this meeting today. I really want to thank all of the, the people who've contributed, Eleanor, for, for leading those panel discussions. That's been super. But also the, the colleagues who spoke and the guests who spoke have given us so many different insights into what's going on here. Uh, but it's not quite the end, because before we finish, actually, we're going to go. Uh, there's an opportunity to go to the exhibition area. So this exhibition area will give you the chance to meet up with the six clusters, the industry partners, Strathclyde Inspire and GCID. And, you know, I invite you now to stay on a little bit longer and uh, take part in that exhibition area to see what else you can, uh, what else is going on and to make some personal contacts. So thanks very much for attending today. <laughs>